hey, hey, everybody, it's Jade. All right, Vikings fans, who's enjoying the season? It's the most wonderful time of the year, right? Right, isn't it? And the Vikings, they got a victory during prime time, 36 to 28 to move to six and seven, beating the terrible Pittsburgh Steelers last night. Yay, woo, everybody excited, woo. Most wonderful time of the year and all that good stuff, right? Are we enjoying it? Yeah. I mean, I I was entertained by that game for sure. I mean, the beginning, complete and utter domination, right? By the purple. And we're like, what are we seeing? What are we seeing? A 29-point lead. This is, they got it in the bag. I even mentioned that on my live stream last night. Like, they got it in the bag. I mean, they did in the long run. But, of course, it has to come down until the very, very end. Oh! in typical Vikings fashion of course of course and of course thank you to all of you that joined the stream as well last night um it was fun so um you guys uh helped keep it entertaining too as well when it was starting to turn into a little bit of a snooze fest there with the complete and utter domination and um like I said in typical Vikings fashion what do they do well they 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 let the Steelers come back into it of course and you know again last play of the game. So here we are. Like I said, the Vikings now are six and seven. And if I can quote Mike Zimmer, who is still the head coach of this team, as far as I know, well, what did he say last night? Quote, okay, another fun night. <laughs> All right. Fun. I'm not sure exactly what your definition of fun is, Mike. And I'm pretty sure he was being sarcastic there. So, you know, Mike's got, I like when, I like when, uh, I like when coach Zim chuckles a little bit, you know, it's like, all right, there's some, there's some humor in there. And you know that there is, it's like, Zim, I know you have to be this like stoic football guy or like, that's what he thinks. It's like, yeah, come on. You can, you can chuckle a little bit there, Zim. Right. And, um, the Steelers, like I said, they now moved to six, six and one and to quote uh, their head coach, Mike Tomlin, well, at least both of these head coaches are kind of like um, in the same boat right now where at any point in time they, they could be let go. Or the it's the swan song probably for each of these coaches, um, probably um, for their said teams, for head coaching their said teams. Oh, Mike Tomlin last night. We were JV again tonight, and I'm talking up front on both sides, end quote. Well, there you go. At least, you know, he tells it like it is. You know, just putting it out there. You know what? Kind of like, hey, we sucked. Well, we sucked. And um, I have to say that my favorite part of the game last night was the Babysitter's Club taking care of big baby Ben. I, I believe there was five sacks last night. So it's like, oh, so long. See you later. Enjoy your retirement. Oh, nobody's going to miss you, big baby Ben. Like, go enjoy your playpen, dude aka retirement like bye so long see you later we won't miss you so that was very very exciting and the babysitters club that's what i've just started calling well i would i've been calling harrison smith and like eric kendrick's the babysitters on defense so i mean they're just a babysitters club like that's who they are like kendrick's like smith like peterson anthony barr probably put in the mix you know they're just babysitting everybody else out there on defense and um, another, um, like, good thing, in my opinion, that came from this uh, win, which should be a good thing, right? But it's just, like, a bad taste in your mouth. You know, it's like a win, but it's like you ate it, but it's, it's you know, left a weird taste. And um, so Dalvin playing, which I originally was like, that's dumb. Like, that's stupid, especially, like... If you're, you know, like going through an injury here and the season is pretty much done, like this team's going nowhere, like, but okay, dude. And it seems like, you know, he wanted to power through and play tough. Like that could have ended actually instead of being like, oh, tough Dalvin. That could have ended in like a worse injury. But I mean, nobody likes to see anybody get injured. But I think Dalvin playing, you know, obviously ended up being a positive for the purple because they got the win. He got, you know, those two touchdowns. So it helped. But that was a positive because that was like a showcased performance for Dalvin, you know, really was like, a, it's like, oh, and behind door number one, lo and behold, what do we have? Dalvin Cook, yes, sure, he could qualify for a running back senior discount. And yes, sure, he fumbles the ball 
And why, yes, sure, he has off the field issues and sure, he can't stay healthy an entire season. But did you see those two touchdowns last night? Did you check out the chef's special? It was Michelin star quality. So I think that performance last night could help because it's time to trade Dalvin. It was time like a year or two ago, but trade them while they're still a high value. And with that trade too, you know, you can help use that um, to rebuild, you know, help the cap space that'll then um, open up with the potential trade and with the potential rebuild that might, that may or may not be happening within the Vikings uh, organization within the team. So, but you know, we're not, we're not ownership. So we don't exactly know. They, who knows if they even know either. They, I don't even know if they have the answers. What, what do we know? Anyway, so moving on. Um, also, one other thing, too. I mentioned this in the stream uh, last night, and I wish I remembered where I originally heard this, but somebody was comparing Dalvin Cook to, like, an Xavier Rhodes 2.0, like, the player who cried, like, oh, I have an owie. Like, you know, when there's a bad play, it's like, okay, yeah, obviously a dislocated shoulder. I don't think you can necessarily fake that, but it's like, mm, Okay, all these other injuries, yeah, they come after that fumble when you whiffed it and the Vikings lost. Hmm. So it's like, get your tinfoil hat on right there. I just think there could be more to that, um, you know, with, oh, I got an owie after a bad play. Uh, we've seen that before. And um, so um, just moving on now to the game itself, uh, like we all know, the purple almost managed to blow a 29 point lead because, like I said, in the third quarter, it was 29 to zero. And um, the Bird Graveyard, a.k.a. U.S. Bank Stadium, it legit seemed like a graveyard last night. Again, I mentioned that in the stream last night, too. Like it seemed really, really quiet in there. Like, don't the fans know that go to the games that they're like a crucial part in the team winning? And I believe that the fans were a crucial part in the team winning last night. Like imagine if this team did not have a home field advantage, who knows how that would have gone. And it's just like, I kind of feel bad for those fans that paid to go to that. I mean, really, but it seemed quiet in there. It legit like the bird graveyard legit seemed like a graveyard. And speaking of graveyards, Zim with that win lives to see another game and I think, or I, I think it would be a safe assumption um, to make that a lot of people wanted to see Mike Zimmer, you know, land his own tombstone at the bird graveyard uh, with a loss last night or with the Vikings loss. But alas, that did not happen because the Vikings, Viking, of course, a national embarrassment, lost to the Lions, and then you come back and you, you almost, like, you had it looking like you're going to blow the Steelers out. I mean, it's just so purple. <laughs> and um, I also, okay, so back to the Babysitter's Club here, too. Um, the defense, they, what do they do? They get tired around the third quarter because the Babysitter's Club is growing up. Like, they're growing up. They're going to go off to college here. They're graduating. You know, they're going to do their thing. So it's like the kids that are left over, they're going to either have to like grow up and learn to like stay home alone. Like they're adult to do that or, you know, find another au pair or something like that. Because seriously, the defensive core here, they're about to get, get ready to go find their spot at Del Boca Vista. Seriously. I mean, the Vikings defense is just, they're aging. They're just aging. So by the time third quarter rolls around, even though it's right after halftime, they're, you know, getting ready to go to bed. It's like a 4 p.m. dinner service here. So it's just, uh, there's there's problems. And that's why, too, that was 29 to zero in the third. And then lo and behold, it was like, you know, wave a magic wand, snap of the fingers. Later, it was 29 to 20. Like Najee Harris had two touchdowns. And then we were all, we were all like, here we go. Because again, in typical Vikings fashion, comes down to the last play, doesn't it? And um, Zim also, I think, was quoted um, last night. I think it was last night. But it literally could have come from any of these losses or wins with this team is, yeah, we have to learn to play with the lead. When are you going to learn these things? Like, at, at a certain point, like, if you didn't learn it already, like, it's never going to work, yeah, right? Like, it's like the trial period of a job, right? Like, there's a, the, the probationary period. Like, 
There's a reason for that because some people just aren't equipped to do the job. Ugh, I just don't understand. No probationary period here with the purple. And, um, you know, just to be a Zimmer advocate here, because I like Mike Zimmer. I always have. Yes, it's eight seasons of this and the dude. It's just, it's not working out. But if I had my way, you know, if I had my way and somebody had to go and somebody had to stay, Spielman can, can, can go and Zim can stay. But to be an advocate here, and I've said this before, and i I'm sure a lot of you feel this way as well because this is, it is what it is. And the NFL is a business after all is like the problems. They start at the top. You got to go, you got to go to the top, the top to get to, to get to that. So that's not Mike Zimmer. Yeah. He's up there. Sure. But who's above him? Rick Spielman. Who's above him? The wolf. So it's like, do we got a wolf in sheep's clothing going on here? Situation. Do we have to start questioning ownership or do they not have like people that are telling them the right things or you know, what I'm sure a lot of you have heard as well, like, are the Wilfs just okay with being average? Like, is that okay with them? Because if that's okay with them, like, that's not okay with me. And I, oh, that just bad taste in my mouth there. But all assumptions at this point, because we don't know. We don't know. Speculation nation over here. And to continue with my Zimmer advocacy here, because, um, I feel like at this point, too, we need somebody to be an advocate for him because everybody's like head on spike at this point. Not everybody, but majority, majority. Fire Zimmer hashtag, okay? It's if Zimmer ends up going and Kirk ends up staying, that is just, oh, that would just, I would, I would be quite annoyed by that, quite annoyed by that. And oh, it's just the way that it all would play out like that, too, where Look at how, you know, Zimmer's coaching rep record up until Kurt got here. Look at, look, and then, and then how's it, how's it gone? Because, oh, all the focus has been on Kirk here, which I'm, I am a firm believer that Zim, that Zim never wanted him in the first place and just had to deal with it, you know, had to deal with it because Rick said, because Rick said so. Puppet master said so. Mm, okay. Well, that, that didn't work out, did it? Or how has that been working out? And um, so once again, if Zim hypothetically gets fired and Kirk stays, he was just able to hide behind Daddy Warbucks coattails yet again, yet again, and just not take any blame, any accountability. And in the meanwhile, just loading up his loading up his pocketbook and, you know, working on his own personal stats because that's again, that's all that dude cares about. And um Spielman needs to go first. He needs to be shown the door first and then go from there. And well, obviously, Spielman needs to be shown the door. So Puppet Master, you can take your your puppet with you as well. And that being uh, Pizza Ranch Boy, Pizza Ranch Boy, Puppet Pizza Ranch Boy. And moving on to him too. And it's too, just to circle back as well. Like Spielman, you got swindled, dude. You got swindled by the Kirk Cousins bus because that's what it is. That's what it is. It's what it is. I said it years ago, years ago that it was a bamboozling. Spielman got swindled. That's what it is. That's, it, that's what it is. And could that be considered his biggest bust? His biggest move, which turned out to be his biggest bust as Vikings GM? Is is that not a fireable offense? I, I, I do believe that it is. But again, I'm not ownership here. I'm not Vikings ownership. <laughs> um, and um, okay, so moving on to Puppet Pizza Boy here. Um, for last night, anyway, um, you know, it's just like, I'm, it's just like, I feel as if I'm talking about a Vikings loss, but they won, but it's just, it doesn't feel it again, a bad taste, bad taste in your mouth. Victory is what that was. And it's just Kirk. Once again, Kirk turned into a pumpkin. He turned into a pumpkin and it's just the, the first interception. It rattled him and he got rattled early too, very, very early on too, on that first drive um, for Minnesota. He was pretty pissy. It was like a pissy pizza ranch boy out there. Like, and I think the thing is too, is I think he gets very, very frustrated um, when things don't go to plan, especially when he does his portion, right? Like I'm leaving, I'm leading up to the perfection. I executed perfectly. Where, where was everybody else? It's like, dude, nobody's going to be perfect. Nobody, nobody is perfect. It's just, nobody is not even, not even you, Kirk, not even you as hard as you try. And so he looked flustered and 
there's all these comments too about oh like Kirk looks flustered you because that's who he is that's that that's exactly who he is that's the type of player he is he plays so uptight right so uptight so flustered because again like so focused on this perfectionism like can't do anything wrong cannot make error cannot make error because I am a robot <laughs> like seriously and it, it becomes to his own detriment it really does and he plays flustered because that's who he is because he's underconfident in his own ability he's insecure and he's too much of a perfectionist for his own good he just is and I just think too like after after he gets rattled it, it's hard for him to come back after that we've seen that before and when there's an interception which has been rare for him it has been rare and you know it's easy you know to have zero or not very many interceptions when you don't necessarily throw the ball a lot of the time but I digress so when there was an interception um Justin Jefferson it's like he will then avoid all all contact with Justin Jefferson like don't even want to like throw near Justin Jefferson again because of last time because of last time just like these flashbacks of that interception it's like dude it happens it happens and I think too he clearly always thinks that it's the receiver making the error I I, I want to know that is there any self-reflection is it possibly that you overthrew the ball or that you underthrew the ball I, I I just think my own assumption here in Kirk's mind it's like well I did everything perfectly you you didn't catch that ball you know for example Justin you didn't catch that ball so that's on you so I can't go over to you like this is Kirk saying this I can't go go to you again because I, I can't trust you because I did it perfectly last time and you you failed I just there's a timidness then that you know just very very scared and um I just think there's got to be some self-reflection there and some accountability which doesn't happen and not just him too like he's not the only one that doesn't take accountability it's pretty much kind of all across the board here and the second interception that he had um it was late in the game with about four minutes left and that led to the Steelers then scoring completing the two-point conversion and then led the the final led to the final score um which happened to be the final score I should say 36 to 28 but late in the fourth quarter very risky throw and it's just it not that second turnover was not good and the thing is he did semi rally after the first interception because there was that big completion um for the score with KJ Osborne I think it was 62 yards go KJ Osborne nice and um again so there was a little bit of a rally there but uh, then that second interception came in at the end of the game there so it's just you know but again they got the victory sure but I just think too it just proves more that Cousins cannot be trusted when the pressure is on he cannot be trusted and he never could this isn't anything new like this isn't anything like you know oh my gosh you know, failed under pressure it's like you know after last night Kirk Cousins primetime record I believe now sits at nine and 17 just for prime time just for prime time so let's just let that sink in and again this isn't anything new for him and I think too the fact that yeah he threw an interception it happens I think it could be accepted more a lot more too especially about um from people that are very very hard on Kirk you know and the stat stands out there they're gonna be like hey you know it's oh yeah but they got the victory but you can still bash Kirk it's like I'm just putting it out there I'm just I'm just I have to call it like I see it and I think too if he if Kirk Cousins had been, has been had been able to prove that he could rally after shortcomings those interceptions would be no big thing like Lamar Jackson you know throwing like four interceptions and whatnot a game because they know that he can pick himself up and rally back it's just with Kurt you 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 don't necessarily see that a lot of the time it, the majority of the time you you don't see it you see him cowering you know and you know cowering like a little frightened turtle you know and going to run to his little little iPad or surface pro whatever it is and go hang out with his emotionally support backup quarterback Sean Mannion so again if he could rally himself and pick himself up by the bootstraps a little bit better after mistakes yeah you sling that around and you throw an interception dude it happened you'll come back we know that you can pick yourself up but 
It's just so when those interceptions happen, and I think he puts way too much pressure again on himself to be perfect. So that way when an error happens, because it inevitably will, oh my God, all systems off. It's like, dude, the, the robot needs a reboot here. And it's just, the team is a bunch of babies. Like you're, when your starting quarterback needs his hand held, you know, to get through games, that's that's a problem. That's a problem. Like that why you paid him all that money to to you know hold his hand to or you know to find a find the backup quarterback to be able to hold his hand. And I too made a little note here, like Kirk Cousins just kind of is like the Debbie Downer of this of this damn team. He's the Debbie Downer, and he's probably. Like Kirk too, you don't see like all this like let's go, let's go, like re- re- you know revving everybody up and high fiving and getting people going, and it's just like Kirk is probably so uptight, like he's afraid to give a high five, like out of fear of like whiffing, whiffing on a high five, like dude, it's like dude, have a slice of pizza, man, like lighten up, lighten up, dude, and um, the the way that. Um, Kirk can get a little pissy and whiny, you know, especially kind of what I saw in the first quarter. And that's fine. I I get it. Have emotion, like have emotion. It's good to see that. But what I've seen come out of him, the emotion that I've seen, it's either like robot or it's like this, this pissy piss pants, you know, I, I wet my diaper attitude, which kind of reminds me of the fiance, the evil to the East quarterback a little bit. It's just, it's not a good look. It's just not a good look. The the cry baby. It's a bunch of babies around here. Honestly, sick of it. It's just like, what are the Vikings running? Like a daycare center? <laughs> Seriously, think that's what it is. And um, everybody's ready for all this to blow up, okay? Because it, it it needs a revamp. Like the team needed a revamp long time ago. And um, I heard this, and it's just really like what? And I mentioned it in the stream last night, so. Everybody's ready for the blow up, the purple ship to just go down because it's basically already already down. Like the bow, the stern, I think it's the 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 stern, I think whatever. The ass's ship is barely hanging in the air, right? Like the purple ship is basically submerged and um so I heard that well, people have to be ready to be unhappy about this. What the f are we now? What, what the F? You think people are happy about this? No. Like, that is the the most outlandish thing I've ever heard. Well, if people, if fans want the, the, the team to blow up, they got to be prepared to be unhappy for a while. What do you think people are now? It, it, what When I hear stuff like that, it's just like, did, did they think all the fans are dumb or what? Like, that just irks me. It's just like, they, so we're, this is why we support this team and buy the merch and pay to go to the games? To be felt like, you know, that we're dumb? I don't know. I don't like it. And, um, all right. So, yeah. What are we now? Well, I guess we're happy now, right? We're all happy. I think there's some people that I'm sure that are excited and happy. You know, there's obviously some of those people. But not, I, for one, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not happy. Haven't been for a while. So, change, it needs to come. And um, all the answers? Who has all the answers? Nobody does. But... The thing is, is what's what's been going on right here, right now, for a while, it's not working. It's not working. So why why continue? Anyway, but I'm going to continue. Now, the game, I think, worked out in Zimmer's favor. Obviously, they got the victory. So, yes, that works out in Zim's favor, especially when his seat is the hottest in the, in the hizzy, right? And I think it worked out in Zim's favor, obviously, because they got the win. And because the run worked and able to utilize Dalvin Cook and was showcased, you know, in that, the run worked perfectly. Yeah, the defense, Mike Zim's defense, they, although they got tired and yeah, there was a little bit of comeback, they were able to hold him off, right? And in Zim's, um, in Zim's favor, I guess we could say, Kirk was terrible. Kirk was terrible. He had he he completed less um, less than half of his passes last night, and which just leads me back to my theme of the year of this Vikings year. I I thought was going to be Mike Zimmer versus Kirk Cousins, and it leads us back to that theme. And it's like too at this point in time, like 
the purple ship, like this is like this is the Titanic, maybe, but it's not like Jack and Rose from Titanic, like with Zim and Kirk. It's not like you jump, I jump, remember? It's like, nope, I'm gonna push you off of there, seriously. Like it's a, it's like a full on Kaladin Hockley situation from Titanic. It sure is. Like, you know, Cal from Titanic, I always win Jack one way or another. So Who's going to be the Kaladin Hockley here? Is it going to be Mike Zimmer or is it going to be Kirk Cousins? All right. I think you all probably know how I feel about that. And um, two, I think with the players, coaches, just with everybody within the Vikings right now, people are still playing nice because with that victory last night, the Vikings, they're back in the hunt, right? Because they're back in the hunt. It's just like, all right, um, sure, back in the hunt. It's more like that movie Mouse Hunt. Has anybody, has anybody seen Mouse Hunt? Well, if you've seen Mouse Hunt, you know how that ends. So it's, it's full on Mouse Hunt over here. And I want to know, like, what are the players and coaches and just like the entire team in itself, like, what do they want this season to be remembered for? Like, what do you want this season to be remembered for? That you didn't stop playing, you didn't stop fighting, like you ended up having a record over 500. That, I mean, what is it? What, what, I want to know what's like their main objective? Like, what's the main objective here for them? I'm very curious to know and maybe probably never will know, but and until there's no butts in the seats, too, um, the, the circus the circus can continue. Yeah, we're all wanting change now, and we're all convinced that it's going to happen. Well, a lot of us. I sh- I should ju- I'm just going to speak for myself, where um, I, I think that this is Mike Zimmer's swan song as head coach. I, I do believe that, but this, this circus could go on. It could continue. I mean, we could just be on a merry-go-round here. Like, well, here we go again. And then next year we could be in this exact same position. I could totally, could totally see it. Especially if the wolves and sheep clo- sheep's clothing are fine with being average, you know, or just kind of, you know, floating around that. Like if they're fine with that. And again, if they're still making money, you know, then what, what do they what do they really care in the end? Right? Because it is a business. So, and um, just saying, when do we have to start putting the magnifying glass somewhere else? And um, the bird graveyard was quiet last night, but there were fans in the stands. I saw quite a few empty ones, and it was pretty quiet. And I didn't see the wolves, but they were at the game, so. Were they taking taking notes here? What's going on? And I'm sure, you know, they look at the numbies. They look at the numbies. And the thing is, too, I think there's also so many person personality conflicts between players, coaches, personnel, that it's just, it's like a big old pile of gob- gobbly goop here. It, it is. It's a, it's a big old pile of gruel. Like people are not vibing, they're not getting along. This this team is like duct taped together, and that it, and it shows. They're six and seven. It's very reflective, and it's just like obviously it, there's issues going on. I mean, clearly between the head coach and the quarterback. I mean, that's 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 the main one, and it kind of just trickles down from there. And um, the Wilfs are gonna have to be the ones to um, dissect and discern that they they are because they're they're the they're the owners of the team. And at this point in time, so the change that um, I, I want, because I've, I've seen enough of all this. I've seen enough of this. Uh, Rick Spielman, again, needs to go. He needs to be shown the door first. Take your big project, your big move, your big bust, your puppet with you. And the new GM, the Vikings need to get a lady in the house. Um, I threw this name out there. Uh, she used to work for the Vikings for um, like a decade. And now as of last uh, May here, she works for the Broncos. But bring in Kelly Klein and um, have her sit in the general uh, manager seat. I think um, I think it's about time to get a lady in the house here and see how that goes. So um, as far as the Vikings go, so moving onward, moving on. And it's like, there's so many, well, there's so many people that, um, that, you know, kind of agree with like what I think, like this team's going nowhere. They're not doing anything like let's enough of this, enough of this charade, right? Where, 
And um, so there's a lot of a lot of people like that. But there are still a lot of like Lloyd Christmases out there where after this victory, you know, so you're saying there's a chance there's a chance. And it's like, OK, that's cute. Like, however, whatever you need to do to make it through the season. But I live in the realistic realm. I always have. I'm quoting Mike Tice again. Enjoying the season. Enjoy the season. <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. And I was entertained by that game last night. Um, definitely. And the Vikings, they do do this well. They always manage to just keep you right on the edge, right? Keep you right on the edge and keep you interested. So got to give them snaps. Got to give them a little golf clap for that. And um, I will continue to watch, of course, because I want to be entertained. And I'm so convinced they're the team's probably going about seven and ten, which would be uh, if that happens, it's one more victory. And uh, but I, I'm going to be here and see how it all plays out. So um, I I have to. Right. Even though it's just it's just inevitable that this team's going nowhere. They are who they are. It is. It is what it is. So I'm just going to have some fun with it because. That's what you have to do at the end, right? You just got to laugh at it. You just got to find the humor in the crazy. So um, on to Soldier Field on Monday night. Another primetime matchup for the purple. Or is it going to be Soldier Field? Okay, that was lame. Lame as hell. But anyway, uh, the Vikings, they notoriously have trouble in Chicago. And I mean, Chicago is its own its own absolute mess over there. Who's going to be the head coach of Chicago by that point in time? Like, is Matt Nagy still going to be there? We, we don't know. And um, a lot of coaches on the hot seat here. So, um, yeah, another uh, primetime matchup, like I said, for the Purple, um, Monday, December 20th, slated to start at 7.20 Central Time. Definitely planning on live streaming, so scroll on through. Uh, we can watch it all go down, and we we want to be entertained. Are you not entertained? I think everybody's using that phrase a lot right now. We're all um, channeling our inner Russell Crowe from Gladiator. From Gladiator? Gladiator. <laughs> Gladiator. Are you not entertained? You know? And it's like, at the, at certain point in time, like, Who's going to turn into Commodus here from Gladiator, you know, within uh, within the Vikings organization like Mark Ziggy? Who's who's going to give the thumbs up or the thumbs down? You know, who's going to turn into the Joaquin Phoenix here in this situation? So it's only a matter of time. And um, yeah, I still eh, especially with the win last night, I think Zim is uh, I think he's staying through the end of the season because it's crazy that we're kind of creeping up until the end of the season right now. And even though almost towards the end of the season, you know, we're on the last half, it's going to be the first matchup with the Bears. So that's kind of crazy. It's a little bit late. Um, but yeah, so Monday, December 20th, it's maybe going to be like a little bit of a mini deja vu moment because again, it's another primetime matchup for the Purple. So we'll see how that goes. And we'll see if uh, Kirk can take his primetime record from what is it? Nine and 17 now to 10 and 17. Maybe he can get in the double digits on the 20th. So we'll see, but I'm um, definitely going to pop on before then. So keep your peepers peeled everybody. And we got to just keep scrolling on now. And um, yeah, hope everybody is having a fine Friday, regardless of uh, however you're feeling about the team right now. And definitely me know y'all always do leave me the comments and again I try to get back to all of you do my best it might take me a minute but I love to hear what everybody's thinking and feeling about this team and where everyone else is at too because obviously y'all know how I feel but like what what's going on with everybody else too because I can sit over here in the realistic realm and make assumptions but at the end of the day it's not best to assume right but I appreciate everybody. Thanks so much for watching, for hanging out. And yeah, let me know what you think. And um, until uh, the Vikings next game, that'll be, again, the 20th. We got to just keep on keeping on. And so it's so funny. Everybody's like, well, now the Vikings are on to their mini bye. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I'm sure they couldn't wait. They probably couldn't wait to get out of there. They need a break. They're tired. <laughs> anyway, so enjoy your mini break. It's like, um, I don't necessarily think it's a mini break. There's a lot of work to do. And I'm sure, because I already heard this uh, after the game last night, there's a lot of film 
there's a lot of film to watch. There's always film to watch, right, people? So, <laughs> all right, everybody. Until next time, take care. Once again, thanks so much for hanging out. I appreciate you. Um, so stay safe and enjoy your weekend and whatever you're doing. So, peace out. P.S. Mar, hi, hi. Hi to you and Kitty. I miss you both. Are you staying, staying um, bunker down up there? Is it snowing? Probably is, I'm sure. But hope you're staying warm and staying safe and all that good stuff. But miss you both. And, of course, say hi to Kitty. All right, everybody. Take care. I will check you on the flip side. Peace out. <laughs>